Hi guys, this has been a uh, hotly requested little series of videos. I'm going to go through an entire Unit 2 paper. This one's from June 2014, so it is the most recent one um, at this date. So we're going to have a little look through it, um, question by question, so I hope you guys enjoy. So question one is a really nice classification question. You're confronted with a phylogenetic, or, uh, phylogenetic hierarchy, as it says in the question, um, and we've got a bunch of different organisms. We've got zebras, donkeys, tapirs, and rhinos. So, first question, what is a hierarchy? This is something that pops up year after year after year, and it's something that you should be able to just regurgitate. So, the, the idea um, is there are groups occurring within groups, and absolutely crucially, um, there is no overlap between these groups. So that means that one species cannot occur in more than one place. So no overlap. And you can do this in bullet points, you can do this as succinctly as you like, but there are five words, two marks. Groups within groups, no overlap. Fantastic. Um, let's crack on. How many different families are shown in figure one? So we're looking for families. So let's go back to our hierarchy and Put the names on basically so here's our this is the kingdom the animal kingdom um this is the oops this is the phylum this is the class this is the order the kp crisps only feed families here on this level and then genus and species below so we have one two three families here nice and to which phylum does the white rhino belong? Let's have a look. Phylum, uh, phylum, white rhino. Here's the white rhino. So we know its genus, its species, its family is Rhinoceratidae. Um, its order is Perissodactyla. Its class is Mammalia. And its phylum is Chordata. Nice. And then it, the question leads us on to a meiosis question. So you should really look at my video on meiosis for this. And it's asking about independent segregation. So it's saying, explain the role of independent segregation uh, in meiosis. Now, crucially, um, this provides genetic variation. It's one of two things that happens in meiosis to provide genetic variation. Um, one of which is independent segregation and the other of which is crossing over. Um, and the reason why it provides variation, as I explained in my meiosis video, um, is because the way that the chromosomes line up um, is completely random, and that promotes different combinations um, of chromosomes at that first division stage. So it promotes different combinations. Sorry about my handwriting. I'll apologize lots in this video series for my handwriting. And there's different combinations of chromosomes, and that's the homologous chromosomes, the parental and the maternal. There we go. Nice. And finally, we're looking at Z-donks. So a Z-donk is a crossbreed uh, of a mountain zebra and a donkey. I'll not underline, I'll highlight. Uh, the body cells of a mountain zebra contain 32 chromosomes. The body cells of a donkey contain 62 chromosomes. Explain why Z donks are usually infertile. So, what we need to do, these are the diploid numbers we've got. We need to figure out the haploid numbers. That would be the gametes. So, the gamete for the zebra is going to be half of 32, which is 16. And the gamete for the donkey is going to be half of 62, which is 31. Now, if we sum those two together, we end up with 47. Now, 47 is an odd number, and that's a problem. So, Z-donk, the Z-donk's diploid number is odd. There we go. So it's odd, 47. And that's a problem when it comes to chromosomes pairing up because you've got to have an even number of chromosomes to be able to pair up. And that's why 
it's not going to happen. Meiosis can't occur because the chromosomes can't pair up because there is an odd number. So chromosomes can't pair. Done. Question one out of eight. We scored eight because we're amazing. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that's been useful. Please like, comment and subscribe and ch stay tuned for video two with question two. Cheers.